Okay, so in this video, uh, we're going to prove a really important result about convex functions, which is that a convex function lies above all of its tangents. So what I mean by that um, is this picture. If I put a tangent line uh, to any one-dimensional convex function or a tangent plane uh, to any multi-dimensional complex function, uh, the function always lies above that, above that tangent. So the blue curve, no matter where I put this tangent line, always loves, lies above the tangent line. Before we prove that, um, we need a little, cur uh, a little lemma, a tiny little result, which I, uh, which I won't prove, uh, which is that, so any one smooth 1D function uh, that's convex on 0 to 1, uh, g of 1 is greater than or equal to g of 0 plus g prime of 0. That's not a very interesting result, but it's useful. Um, so I'll leave you to prove it. Um, if you write that down, the definition, what it means for G to be convex, um, so the definition uh, of convexity uh, for G of T, and then you have a derivative in that function, um, so you uh, unwrap it using the first principles definition of the derivative for G prime of T, um, rearrange things, uh, and that uh, inequality should drop out um, straight away. You should be able to see how you get to that. So we're going to use that result as part of the proof of the thing that we actually want to prove, an important theorem that says convex functions lie above tangents. So the theorem says, uh, assuming that the partial derivatives of f uh, exist in some convex set C, uh, then I have an if and only if statement then. So f um, is a convex function if and only if uh, this expression here, uh, f of x plus uh, y minus x times the gradient of x, less than or equal to f of y. Um, and that, base, that statement basically says uh, that f of y um, is larger uh, than this expression here is the expression for the tangent plane uh, centered at, uh, centered at um, x. So yeah, so in every tangent plane, uh, the left-hand side, so this plane here on the left-hand side of this inequality is lower than the surface f of y. So that's the thing that we're going to prove. So okay, so I'll do the forward direction first, coming onto the, uh, onto the board here. So uh, I'm going to prove that if f is convex, uh, then uh, the uh, function lies above the tangent. Uh, and so to do that, I'm going to uh, uh, define a function. You know, this is uh, uh, the, um, uh, the function that appears uh, in the definition of convexity. So it's going to be a useful thing uh, to define. And here's my little uh, lemma um, that I had before, um, which I'll use in just a sec. So let's start with this. Uh, and I want to, you know, I'm going to want to use my lemma here. So let's actually calculate uh, a few things. So I need the derivative. I'm going to need the derivative uh, of g. Uh, now, it's a multi, you know, we have to use the, uh, the chain rule, which means you have to use the chain rule for partial derivatives, uh, which, is kind of, uh, which is kind of messy, but we've been through it before. Uh, so essentially, uh, you're going to differentiate uh, f, which is going to give me a gradient of f, and then differentiate the inside with respect to t, uh, and that'll disappear. I'll be left with x minus y. And then to make everything work, we get a tangent there, and I get the gradient of this. Uh, so we proved that uh, when we talked about Taylor's, uh, we talked about Taylor series, um, and you can check that out. Now, what do I need? Why did I differentiate this? Uh, well, to plug into my lemma here, I'm going to need g prime of zero. Uh, so plug in t equals zero, and I'll get x minus y transpose gradient f of x. Is that? So if I plug into the lemma, then I'll learn how to spell uh, lemma as well. Uh, then I get uh, g of 1. So g of 1 is going to be plugging in t equals 1 into this. Uh, so that'll give me uh, x plus uh, x minus uh, x plus x minus y. Uh, I've copied something down wrong, haven't I? Uh, oh, that's a y minus x. Now, if this were a professional operation, at this point, uh, we'd restart the video. 
but we're not, so we won't. We'll just fix that up. OK, plug into the lemma. Uh, so uh, plugging in t equals, uh, t equals 1 here, uh, the x cancels out, and I'm left with f of y. Right, so f of y is going to be greater than g of naught. So plug in t equals naught into that, and I'll get f of x uh, plus g prime of naught, which is this thing. And that's the result. That was the thing that I had to, uh, that I was asked to, pr to prove. So that was the easy direction. Uh, the harder direction is going back the other way. So assuming this result here, and then using it uh, to prove uh, that my function f is convex. So the thing that I need to do here, um, and this is not obvious, uh, is to draw up a picture of, picture of my function, and then I'm going to think about three points here, so x, y, and then a point in between. Right, so some point uh, z in between. It's in between those two. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, um, use this expression twice. So I'm going to use it on the interval uh, from x to z. So one interval that's there, uh, and then the interval uh, from z to y. So we'll use this result twice. Uh, and then by magic, you're going to see that the, that the definition of convexity um, crops out. We're going to have to do this because convexity involves us thinking about this line interpolating between these points. So we're going to have to think of uh, the set of all points uh, that lies between x and y. So we need to introduce this z uh, in order to get to that. OK, so let's think about uh, on the interval x to z. What does this expression uh, give? And it's going to give that f of z, I'll write the uh, left-hand side first. So x minus z transpose gradient f of, uh, gradient f of z uh, is less than or equal to uh, f of x. That's on x to z. And then on z to y. Write this down again, uh, and I'm going to change. Uh, uh, I'm going to leave z's as z's and change x's to y's. Okay, so that's writing down something that looks very similar, uh, similar twice. Uh, and now, the whole point of z is that z uh, interpolates between x and y. Right? So ed, uh, z gives me all the points uh, that lie between x and y. So z is t times x plus uh, 1 minus t times y. Okay. So I can substitute... Uh, I can substitute into these two equations. Let's call them 1 and 2. If I do that, and so I'll let, you, uh, I'll let you do that, and maybe I'll just write out the answer. Write out what we get. Uh, so this takes a little bit of rearrangement, uh, actually. Um, so I'm substituting, I'm going to keep that f of z and I'll substitute in for z. Uh, substitute in for z there. And if I do that, bear with me. The nice thing about that is I'm going to get an x minus y here, which is what I'm going to want uh, to get the, the definition of complexity, uh, convexity. Complexity. So what I've done there is I've plugged uh, this definition of z uh, into that z there. And that's worked in an x minus y, and I've had to do some factorization uh, and stuff to get to, to get to the result. So I'll do the same thing uh, in the other equation. 
uh, and then I'm going to get something similar. I'm going to get an x minus y uh, as well. It's actually a y minus x when you plug it in. I get, I will get that. Okay, and so what you can see now, right? I'm trying to uh, find uh, the definition of convexity uh, in this expression here. Uh, so for the people uh, sitting in the room, you can look at the definition of convexity uh, up there. And if you look in the notes, um, you can see that uh, I sort of need to get rid of this gradient. This term dis needs to dis disappear. I've got two things I need to combine here and make that disappear. Um, they look pretty similar. I can almost add these things um, uh, and make the, uh, the gradient term disappear. But I've got these factors messing me up. So I need to multiply that expression by t and that expression by 1 minus t. And then I can add these things uh, and that term in the middle will disappear. So it will do that. So multiply um, uh, the top thing uh, by t uh, and this by 1 minus t. If I do that, t times f of z plus 1 minus t uh, times f of z is actually going to leave me with just an f of z. t times 1 minus, uh, t times f of z will disappear. Uh, this thing ends up being, let's, um, uh, I'll get the same t1 minus t, t1 minus t there, and I'm going to get uh, x minus y uh, plus y minus x transpose gradient f of z if I factorise everything there. And then on the right hand side I'm going to get t f of x plus 1 minus t f of y. Sorry, it's run off the board. For the people at home, let's zoom out a tiny bit and you'll be able to see. There you go. So what disappears? So some stuff cancels out. The beautiful thing is that that term is equal to zero, which means that whole thing is equal to zero. And so actually, if I uh, write, out what, uh, write out what is left, uh, and in fact, I'll replace this z with the definition of z here, uh, I end up uh, with f of tx plus 1 minus ty. Uh, plus nothing is less than or equal to t f of x. And that is exactly the definition uh, of a convex function. So we've done it. So let's come back uh, to the theorem. Uh, now that we've done that, so we proved that. Um, so convex functions lie above their tangents. Um, always. Uh, so this picture, um, so, you know, that's, the, that's the intuition in 1D. So wherever I put f of z, that tangent line always lies below the curve. Here's the intuition, that's what it looks like uh, in 2D and in higher. So you generalize lines to planes uh, and curves to surfaces and anywhere on that convex surface, the 2D convex function, that you put a tangent plane now, um, uh, the, the function the surface lies above the tangent plane. Okay, so that's a nice result. Um, why should we care? Well, there's an important consequence of this. We're in the middle of a long story here um, of, uh, of important facts about these things. Uh, this actually connects to uh, an important result that it allows us to actually do stuff, do some uh, mathematical stuff, uh, which is that um, uh, a convex function um, is, uh, happens when you have a positive definite Hessian. So we can actually use this result, um, that convex functions lie above their tangents, to prove something uh, about properties of, this, uh, properties of this function, f of x, properties of what's going to be a cost function for us, uh, and that's where we're going to go uh, in the next video.